So every time we do a load of laundry, something interesting happens I'd like to show you. Okay. So water's on. Looks pretty normal. Whoa, that's not normal. Looks like you're getting air into your water supply somehow. So we're on well water here. We actually have a fairly complex system downstairs. Right, you'll have to take me down there. Let's see it. So since we've moved in, Richard, we've discovered a couple of problems with okay. the water. Uh, the first one is that it's very acidic. The second one is that it has a lot of iron in it. Yeah. And the third thing is there's a lot of radon in the water. Otherwise it's perfect, right? Right. <laughs> That's the thing about a well. You just don't know what you're going to get out of the ground. When you have a municipal water supply, you have a certain assumption about water quality and volume. But in your case, you just don't know. Let me take you through what you've got here so far. Here's the typical line right here that goes down into the well. Who knows if it's 50, 100, 150 feet down. Depends on the water aquifer. You got a pump at the bottom, I assume, made out of stainless steel. Sometimes we see a pump up here. But in this case, I assume it's under the, under the ground, comes up here. Here's the pressure switch. This will bring that pump on and off. But you don't want it to come on and off all the time, so there's always a well tank like this. This pushes the well's water supply into this tank. There's a diaphragm right here and air on the other side. Now the pump pumps and creates a charge ready to go for the house right here. And this is really what most people have when they have a well. Everything else you've added is for your water quality issues. This looks like a sediment or neutralizing tank right here. So you can see the water, instead of going right out to the house now, this is shut off. The water goes through, down through beads of resin or, or a filter, comes back up here. And now let's follow. It goes over here. And you come here. So this, this I've seen before. This is really important. This is a radon mitigation device. These are great. And this is going to take the radon out of the water and dump it to out to the roof. Water comes in here, comes through the tank. You got another pump right here, okay? And then you've got another sediment filter right there. So you've got a lot of stuff going on. And I, I think I have a hunch about what's causing that air upstairs. But I think it's better to show you. I'll be back in just a minute, okay? Well, I think that the source of the problem is this radon mitigation device, and I brought another one here to help understand what's going on. But I got to tell you, I'm thrilled that you have this installed. Radon is a big deal. You know, we tend to think about radon as coming up through the basement floor in the air, but it also can occur in the water, as you know. And radon is a carcinogen. It's a naturally occurring gas. It's a byproduct of uranium, and it can happen anywhere. It, it's, you know, it's not just that you have to have a nuclear power plant near you. It's a naturally occurring in the ground. And number two cause of lung cancer. So let me take you inside. You see this right here? Here's a water line right here, and here's the exhaust, right? You can see the water line here and exhaust. Now underneath the inlet, you can see there's a spray nozzle right here, and water's going to come out here and spray into the top of this upper tray. And the water goes around right here. But if you look carefully, see these holes down at the bottom? Right? Oh, yeah. So it's much like those air holes on a table hockey game, you know, where the air is coming this way. There's a blower underneath that's going to push air up through the water that goes around here. And as that does, the air coming through will actually split off or pull out the radon gas out of the water. So let me show you on the bottom side. You see right here? See the holes? Yep. So there's incredible power of force, air coming this way, coming up through. The water works its way around down through this pipe. So now, when it goes to the bottom, that water now starts to fill the reservoir. You can see there's a takeoff at the bottom and two floats right here, a float and a backup float to tell the system when to come on and off. Now, this water will go up to this level and be about 10 or 12 gallons here. Now, your well pump, before the system was installed, used to supply water to the entire house. Now, it really only supplies water to this radon mitigation per se. Let me show you what I mean. Water comes into here, and when that valve comes on, sends the water down through that spray nozzle, it goes through here, and it shuts off. This is a pressureless tank. You know, it's not like a water heater in the basement. This is a pressureless tank open to atmosphere. There's really just a reservoir of water with no pressure, which means there would be no way for that water now to be forced out through the faucets. So when you have one of these, you have to have a completely separate second well pump and well tank right here, and that's what you've got. So now it pushes out here to the, to the outside. Now what the manufacturer wants to do is to make sure that you have more water going in than coming out. So they put a flow restrictor right here at seven gallons on the inbound side, 
and a six gallon flow restrictor on the outbound side. Well, what happens if you don't have seven gallons per minute over there? What happens if there's a restriction, which means you don't have enough water coming in? Why would that happen? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. I mean, the well could be different levels of water uh, volume in it, right? The pump could be variable. But one of the prime culprits is actually adding additional filtration upstream of it. If a filter does its job, what does it do? It starts to clog and, until you clean it again. So now there may be times during the end when that's a little bit dirty that we no longer get the water. Now this is only going to be showing up, I think, when we do something like this wash machine you told me about, right? If you have a regular faucet that's two and a half gallons a minute, you're never going to draw down that reservoir. But with a top loader like this, you might be looking for 25 gallons of water here. There's only 10 over there. I think what happens in this case that water coming here will pull the air that should have gone up through the vent pipe and pull it right in. So I think the solution is we need to give you control to make sure that we never take more water out of this device than is allowed in. We're going to add a secondary valve here, another flow restrict that we can set together. And that means no matter what happens with the neutralizer, the pump, the well, or anything that could change supply, we'll always make sure we never pull air the wrong way. Sound good? Sounds good, Richard. Mark, water's back on. I've cut in a new shutoff valve right here, so you still end up with the service valves on both sides of the filter. I, while I had it drained, I put a new filter cartridge in too. But I took your existing ball valve and actually adjusted it in such a way with it running, I took a bucket and a timer to be sure we were less than five gallons per minute coming through the system, so it'll never happen again. And I always take the handle off so nobody changes it by mistake, but you can always adjust in the future. Time for the test. Let me run the washing machine and I'll see you upstairs. Okay. How we do? Any burping going on up here? Haven't seen any. I think we fixed it. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget that faucet. Enjoy, my friend. Thanks for your help, Richard. Right, great. Turn the water off. Don't waste water. See you, man. You know, most basements are complicated. This guy's got a whole <laughs> nother level of complexity <laughs> going on down Let there. Let me try to demystify with this uh, illustrator here. So this radar mitigation tank in normal mode has water just in the bottom third right there. And then, as we mentioned, water comes from the well right here, and we want it to come in at like seven gallons a minute, and we want this to go out at six gallons a minute, okay? So that's normal mode. Now, what happens in between it is that water that sprays down into this nozzle has some water, but also has air and radon. And this blower fan comes on right here and pushes it this way and it picks up the radon, picks up the air, and it leaves out to above the house. Mm -hmm. So in normal mode, everything's in balance. But what we found on this one is that this seven gallons per minute didn't always exist, right? You had the pump down under the well, it came through a restriction that could change all the time, and all of a sudden, as that restriction happened, seven could become six, could become five, and all of a sudden, this six gallons per minute won the day, and when that happened, this pump would pull, the water level would go down, and now with the air and radon, instead of going up that pipe, would pull the wrong way mm. and come right out through the faucet right there. Which means you not only got the burping, which was annoying, right. but the stuff that you're actually pulling, the air, it's, it was actually radon, it's radon air that you wanted. Totally dangerous. So, so it's more than just burping. Correct. So it's an important story. I wanted to actually show that there is a device that can work when it's per, uh, adjusted properly, mm -hmm. okay? And if you're worried about radon, there is a radon test right here that you can put a little water in here and send that off to be tested. Right. There's another one that you can test what's going on in the air in your basement. And you left him with the ability to continue to dial That's in right. that adjustment That's right. If, if he there's needs a restriction, to. he can always adjust it on the discharge yeah. side. All right. Good information. Right. And more importantly, does John Madden know you have his telestrator? This is the Trethestrator. 